What's up guys and welcome to another standard deck tech video. Today we have something really special for you brought to us by Todd Anderson. Is it spells? This deck is very reminiscent of the old school Nivik Cyclops and Kiln Fiend decks that focus on punching through insane amounts of damage with a combination of one or two creatures and a ton of high value spells. As Todd mentions, the deck is great at gaining card advantage and ideally utilizing well-timed removal and burn spells to get ahead and stay ahead of opposing decks. As we've seen with similar decks in the past, there are a couple of major pitfalls when playing this kind of strategy, but we will talk about these pitfalls throughout this video. Before we jump in, I want to encourage you to go over to Star City Games and check out the video they posted on this deck. Todd pits this deck against another new standard build and gives his perspective on why he built the deck the way he did. I would also encourage you to test different cards in this build as this is preliminary and we may find some cards to be better than others in the upcoming meta. Starting off, we take a look at the creature package for this deck. 4 Crackling Drake, 4 Enigma Drake, and 4 Goblin Electromancer. Obviously in a deck called Is It Spells, we can't expect to see a high number of creatures, however each of these creature cards are extremely high value. Goblin Electromancer is the best enabler possible for this deck. Making spells cost one less is the difference between casting only one spell a turn, or casting two or even three. As we've already mentioned, the spells in this deck are giving us the advantage, so casting multiple per turn is the point we are hoping to get to as soon as possible. Additionally, the goblin's ability can stack, meaning if you have multiple copies out at once, some of your more expensive spells can actually be cast for two or three mana less. The Cackling Drake and Enigma Drake are clearly here to deal excessive amounts of damage very quickly. You'll already be playing spells anyway, so you might as well capitalize on them by running creatures that naturally get bigger with each one you cast. The Enigma Drake is a card we've seen before. For each spell in your graveyard, the Drake gets a bonus of one power. This can get out of hand fairly quickly with all the spells we intend to play, making this guy a giant flying bomb. If left unanswered, Enigma Drake can very easily win the game, and with 4 toughness, it holds up fairly well against a number of the popular burn spells in the format. Crackling Drake is the new kid on the block, but serves a nearly identical role as Enigma Drake. At 2 blue and 2 red, it's a bit harder to cast, but does provide some extra upside. First, it does replace itself once it hits the battlefield. Obviously, this doesn't trigger if the Drake is countered, but in most instances, the Drake will replace itself even if it gets removed immediately. Second, the Drake also gets a power boost from instants and sorceries in the graveyard, but also those in exile. With Jumpstart being a sub-theme we see throughout this deck, we will have some spells in Exile which this can capitalize on. Cackling Drake also has the strong toughness of 4, so burning it out is a much less viable option for a number of other decks. Where the creatures of this deck tend to suffer is the point and click removal. We obviously don't have a large number of threats in this deck, and if the opponent is able to continuously answer each one we play, we can very easily lose by just stalling out for too long. The deck runs a high number of spells to push those Drakes to their max power, 4 Chemister's Insight, 4 Lightning Strike, 4 Opt, 1 Risk Factor, 4 Shock, 3 Charter Course, 4 Discovery, 1 Fight with Fire, and 1 Kazi Duplicate. Chemister's Insight, Opt, Charter Course, and Discovery are all fantastic ways to churn through our deck and fuel our drakes. Opt and Charter Course have been around for a while and are extremely efficient in a deck like this. Chart of course does have the discard drawback which may come into play, but in a deck like this, pitching a less relevant spell just gives you more fuel for the drakes, making it much less of a backbreaking drawback. Chemister's Insight is a bit expensive, however we are hoping to have a goblin out to make it a mana or two cheaper. It also features Jumpstart, the new mechanic from Guilds of Ravnica that lets you get a second use out of a card by exiling it, paying the cost again, and discarding a card. As pitching a card from your hand won't be a major drawback in this deck, and exiling it still means Cackling Drake keeps the power buff, there really is very little downside to this card. Discovery is another new spell from Guilds featuring the Surveil mechanic. It allows you to look at the top two cards of your deck, decide if you want to put one or both in your graveyard, and then draw a card. Again, graveyard fuel is great, and seeing three cards for only two mana is extremely good value for us. This deck does not run black mana for dispersal side of this card, as it will oftentimes not be very relevant, but it is definitely a consideration when brewing with this list. Risk Factor, while able to draw cards, also plays the role of dealing direct damage to the opponent and shortening the clock. This is a very powerful card that I think we will see hit a few decks this standard season, but this is not the kind of deck that can capitalize as well on multiple copies, which is why we are only running one. We again see Jumpstart here, which gives us two uses out of a single copy that we do have, while pumping our Crackling Drake. Moving to the Burn package, we see Lightning Strike, Shock, and Fight with Fire. In most decks, Burn is usually used to clear some creatures in the early game, while occasionally going straight to the face for the last few points of damage. This deck is a bit different. 
Because we value having spells in our graveyard, we can preemptively cast these burn spells directly to the opponent, pumping up our drakes, and in turn gaining extra value. The key is being efficient, so if you happen to have one extra mana open to shock the opponent, definitely consider doing so if the board position seems right. Both shock and lightning strike hit both players and creatures, making them perfect for this deck, and fight with fire when kicked can straight up just win games. Finally, we have a one of quasi-duplicate. Seeing as we don't have many creatures and we need a ton of spells, having a spell that creates a creature is giving us the best of both worlds. Copying a drake can very easily close out a game, and again, having jumpstart gives us double the value off of our single copy. We don't run more than one of these because we are banking on having a creature to copy for this to even be good at all. There is a risk of drawing this with no board presence, making it a complete dead card, and having more copies only increases that risk. The land base is pretty straightforward here, as it's only a two color deck and we have a large amount of fixing in the current standard environment. Six islands, six mountains, two is it guild gates, four steam vents, and four sulfur falls. Nothing too exciting here, though I would give some consideration to the is it guild gates. Playing threats on curve is extremely important for this deck, so running into a tapped land on turn three or four could be a huge drawback. Definitely play around with this and see what you think. I'll briefly go over each sideboard card Todd included with this list. Keep in mind that with Guilds of Ravnica coming in, we will see a large shift in the meta. We may find that some of these cards are more relevant than others, but each is still worth pointing out here. Three Firemines Research, a great card for grindy matchups. It provides late game card advantage as well as flexible burn for either creatures or damaging the opponent directly. Three Disdainful Stroke, again, great against matchups that may go long. The goal is to counter a key card on the opponent's side and be able to grind out the match from there. Three Fiery Cannonade, a low to the ground sweeper that's great against a lot of the aggro decks we expect to see early in the season. It's also very strong against token decks as it can efficiently deal with all of them all at once. Two Ionize, a more flexible counter than Disdainful Stroke, but harder to cast. Again, great for the grindy matchups and tacking on some incidental burn never hurts. Two Spell Pierce, another counter, though much more narrow than the first two. This is better against mid-range decks where the mana efficiency is their goal. Late game, it doesn't have much relevance, though it can be pitched to trigger jumpstart and pump up the drakes. Two Lava Coil, one of the best answers for creatures that Red gets from Guilds of Ravnica. Notably, this is great in the mirror match as it can burn out both drakes. In general, it's also great against most other creature decks. The Exile Clause also gets around graveyard synergies, which we expect to be relevant in the coming standard season. Again, tailor your sideboard for the meta you expect to see. With guilds just now being released, we won't know exactly how things will pan out for a number of weeks, as the best decks will rise to the top eventually. The Is It Spells deck is a personal favorite of mine, as it's all about gaining card advantage and swinging with giant evasive threats. Test this deck out over the next few weeks and let us know what you think of it. If you happen to have a list of your own that you'd like us to discuss, leave a link to it in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed today's deck tech video. Make sure to subscribe if you are not already to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. With that, I'm going to get out of here. I will see you guys in the next deck tech video.